Hello and welcome back to the colony with Man of the Ants. So something a little different today. Today we're going to be going through the tutorials and all the initial setup for Iron Wolf VR. Now Iron Wolf VR, as you may be able to see, is a submarine simulator game of some sort. I don't know too much about it. The game itself was gifted to me by the amazing and incredible Andy. So everyone say a massive thank you to Andy. Now this is a, uh, a th I think it's a, I believe it's a three player co-op game. So the intention is I'm going to go through the setup and do all the tutorials so I know what I'm doing. And then when me, Andy and Indy next get together, we will have a go at Iron Wolf as a co-op game and see how that goes. So that's the plan. So this is how the game loads up. Then so we have some VR setup to do on our wrist here. So we will do this. So we'll point at that and press the trigger, and then nothing will happen. Is it just letting us know that there is such a thing? I suppose we can get into the menu from here. Settings, SID settings, or oh, this is that the actual, this actual wrist uh, thing. I did give it a name, I've forgotten what it's called now. Gaze lock, hide hand, gaze sensitivity. That's all fine. General settings, desktop controls, I don't know, external shadows. I, I don't... What does that mean? What does protanopia mean? No idea. Volume settings, all fine. Look at motion settings. Uh, smooth dash room scale, I guess room scale. Can we do both? Smooth and room scale? I don't know. We'll leave on room scale and see how we go, shall we? So let's uh, go back from there. So... Let's do the tutorial. I don't know how many tutorials there are. Oh, there are four, was that? Yeah, one for each area, I guess. So I believe this is three player. I'm a little confused. There's also a tank game that Andy has mentioned as well, which has one of them is three player. I don't know if they both are specifically. So here we are in the first room. This is the SID submarine information display. That's what it stands for. And it will guide you through the tutorial. Using your other hand, point at the continue button below and pull the trigger below your index finger. Just say pull the trigger, your index finger. Just say pull the trigger. You don't need anything else. You don't need to tell me what finger it is. In Iron Wolf VR, you use this trigger button to interact with all of the controls in the submarine. Grab and fully open the ballast intake on your left to dive the submarine. Grab and fully open the ballast intake on your left to dive the submarine. Is it expecting me to be facing this direction? Am I facing the wrong direction? Because to me, that's that's where my desk is. So that's my forward in terms of my room setup. So I'm guessing it's thinking I'm facing this way. So this is on my left. Okay, so you don't have a grabbing animation. Okay, fair enough. So our buoyancy has dropped. We are going down, down, down. You have enough ballast to turn off the water intake to stop diving. It's all gone red. Does that mean we're actually submerged, does it, I'm guessing? So our buoyancy is still nothing, so our ballast, I guess, is still uh, full. The submarine switches to the red lighting mode when fully submerged. Below the 100 meter, uh, below 100 meters, the submarine will start taking crush damage. We don't go below 100, which is the green there. It's highly recommended to keep the submarine above 200 meters at all times. What happens when you get to 200 meters? 100 is crush damage. Um, grab and fully open the air intake to force out all of the ballast. So that's going to force the water out of the ballast. It's going to increase our buoyancy and we're going to start, start raising again, I guess. So our buoyancy is at maximum, so I've turned that off now. Plus of that saying we should leave it on, we'll leave it on, but I don't think it's gonna make any difference at that state. We it is the ballast is empty. I suppose ballast water level is what we're going for, isn't it? Rather than the buoyancy. Okay. Turn off the air and take to save compressed air and wait for the submarine to return to the surface. Which we are doing now. We'll be we'll know that properly when the lights all come up, won't we? And we should be any minute now. Any minute now. Come on now, we're basically there. That sounds like we're, uh, there we go, perfect. The submarine travels much faster on the surface, but you are easier to spot by enemy planes and ships. Well, that makes sense. What's our buoyancy bouncing around? Move to the outside by grabbing the handle on the hatch above you. This hatch can only be operated when the green light next to it is turned on. 
Is, is that the green light it's on about? What green light? I guess it means these lights here, right? Oh, this light. I see it now. I see it now. Hello? Hello? So again, this is what I would class as forward facing for my setup, but the actual things we need to use are either side of us, which is a little weird. The highlighted heavy machine gun is used to engage enemy planes when you are surfaced. Grab the horizontal handle on the heavy machine gun to pull the machine gun mount around to the right. Grab the horizontal, I, I, I was reading. Grab the vertical handle with your right hand to precisely aim the machine gun and pull the slider to the, on the left of the gun to begin firing. I see. The highlighted 888mm that gun is used for engaging enemy ships when you are surfaced. Highlighted wheel allows you to rotate the whole deck gun platform. I see. I see. The highlighted wheel allows you to change the pitch. Makes sense. Was that as far as it goes? Pick up the highly highlighted 88mm shell. Carefully push the shell into the breech. Is this the breech? Yes, it is. Now that that gun is loaded, use the, use the highlighted firing gun lever to fire the gun. Let's move it away from the uh, submarine. Let's move it away from the submarine, I said. Do you not want that to happen? Okay, whatever. Not quite as uh, immense sounding as I was hoping, I'll be honest. Pull the handle on the hatch below you to return to the control room. Perfection. The map gives you an overview of the surrounding area. The pulse in circle show the area where the enemies will be able to detect your presence. Everywhere. Everywhere in that. Uh, submerged mines are an X. Vessels appear as circles. The highlighted waypoint marker shows you the direction of the next mission objective. Okay, 90 degrees to the right. The highlighted range meter shows you the distance of the next mission objective. Up there, 2749. Set your course by setting the auto rudder to 90 degrees by rotating it to the right. Now put the engine order telegraph in the full position ahead. Full ahead! The tutorial will automatically set the EOT to stop when you reach the waypoint. In game, you will need to do this yourself. Is this what I mean? Engine order telegraph. Okay, yes, it means this. So we're now heading in the right direction. So we just set ahead and we don't actually turn the submarine itself. We just set ahead and then it just automatically sorts itself out. So this is, we're just waiting for this to count down now, I guess. I guess that white dot, we are under 3,000 meters, so that white dot must be where the where we're heading for. About two and a half, yes. Do we have a speed? Oh, we do, we'll... Excuse me, getting to 14 knots. Oh, we've slowed down, have we? In order to surprise the enemy, it is best to attack from periscope depth. Okay. Fully open the water intake on your left. Once you have enough ballast, the tutorial will automatically close. What does it class as enough ballast? Oh, just a little bit, just into the blue. Notice the highlighted depth gauge. The blue area is the periscope depth. Ah, okay, right. So we give ourselves just enough ballast to be to sink down. So I guess if we leave the ballast there, it'll leave us in the blue area on that. Is that what I mean? Move into the room behind us to launch torpedoes. Rotate the highlighted door wheel to move there. Didn't even realize that was a door. So these are the different stations, I guess, that each of us will have when we're playing this on multiplayer. Pull this periscope down to a comfortable height. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, I can see anything in there. 
raise the periscope view by turning the highlighted handle. Well, that makes sense why I couldn't see anything. Oh, hello. If you don't have much space to move around in, switch the periscope to fixed mode using the highlighted switch so you don't have to walk around it. I think that's what we probably want. Use the highlighted handle to rotate the periscope to the 90 degree mark viewer. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's quite cool. Okay. There he is. There he is. I see him. Lock the target with the crosshairs placed over the target. A green indicator light below the lock target switch will display when the target is lined up correctly. So we'll just move this off target. Oh, it doesn't... Oh, th oh that, I see that green light. Right. Perfect. And then hit the lock target switch. Target locked. You now have a firing solution for torpedoes from the highlighted com uh, torpedo data computer. What's a hydrophone and what is it doing? Okay, that's the uh, highlighted torpedo data computer. Fire torpedoes by flicking the highlighted switches. You'll be able to see them approach the target on the torpedoes data on the torpedo data computer. Okay. Let's do uh, let's do four. Let's go. Don't know really know what I'm looking at here. We can see the ship there. Oh, there we go. We can see that there. Didn't see it on that, but saw it on that. Is that where I'm supposed to be looking? Oh, and down he goes. Nice. Nicely done. You've destroyed the target. For more difficult targets, you can remotely guide torpedoes with the highlighted controls. Okay. You've completed the tutorial. We hope you enjoy playing Iron Wolf VR. Press continue to exit this, this tutorial. So is that all of the tutorials, or is that just the first one? Learn how to fix... Now yeah, that was just the first one. Yes, let's learn how to fix submarine damage then. Okay, so this is back in the main room? Yes, it is. Water leaks will appear when the submarine takes damage. Yes. Pick up the welder located on the door behind you by pressing the trigger button near its handle. What is the handle? Okay. Activate the welder by pulling the trigger button. So you don't have to hold trigger to hold it. Use the welder to fix the leak that's appeared to the right of the door. Sort of like that, yeah? Let go of the grab trigger and push the welder into one of the available spheres on your belt. Oh. Oh, okay, I've got a welder. Use the highlighted bilge pump to pump out the water. Bilge pump. Okay, down there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. This concludes the damage tutorial. Press continue to exit the tutorial. That was a shorter tutorial than the first one, wasn't it? Okay. Next. Torpedo room. Learn how to reload torpedoes. You would have thought that would be part of the uh, standard tutorial, really, wouldn't you? I'm going to put that one in my spheres immediately. Open the highlighted hatch at your feet to go into the torpedo room. Okay. How do I... There we go. Okay. This is the torpedo room where you can manually reload torpedoes. Nice. Open the highlighted torpedo door. Yes. Not enough. There we go. Fully insert the torpedo by pulling it into the tube. This bad boy. Oh my word. Torpedoes are huge. And then close the door. 
lock the torpedo door, flood the tube using the highlighted lever. Oh, it's got a little marker, nice. Turn the flood lever off. Torpedo is now ready to be fired. You can blind fire the torpedo by flicking the highlighted switch. But why I would want to do that, I don't know down here. If you forget to drain the tube before end opening the hatch, the torpedo room will flood. Oh my word, let's not do that. Drain the tube by flicking the switch. This concludes the tutorial. Okay. So that's the third room then, that's quite interesting. What's the last tutorial? The oh, there's another room, the engine room. Learn how to manage the submarine engine systems. So bearing in mind how the rooms are set out, fire and solution, torpedoes, sort of navigation. How do we even get to the engine room? Head to the engine room at the back of the submarine. Is this not... Oh yes, because the periscope was up there, wasn't it? I got confused. I need to go back again. So I guess engine and torpedo firing kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Because they're just, they're next to each other is what I'm thinking. This room is used to manage resources such as battery and pressurized air when the engine assist is turned off. The submarine is propelled using the electric engines which drain the battery. Diesel generators can be used to recharge the batteries when on the surface. Use the highlighted fuel pump to increase the generator RPM and battery recharge rate to maximum. Okay. The efficiency output of the diesel generators is dependent on the temperature. Oh, I see, I see. It's just getting quite high. Use the highlighted cooling pump to decrease the temperature to the center of the gauge. So this is how, how fast the engines are running, and this is used to cool them down, which is interesting. No middle ground there, it's either on or off, is it? Yeah, okay. Leave on then. To keep the generator running at optimal performance, try and keep the temperature in the center of the gauge. Turn off. Turn off. I can't turn this off now, so I can. I literally can. Oh, click to continue. The submarine is fitted with a snorkel which will allow you to use the diesel generators at periscope depth. Use the highlighted control to raise the snorkel to the upright position. The diesel engines can be used whenever the green intake ready light is on. Compressed air is replenished by using the compressor on the surface or with the snorkel. This uses battery power. What does it say about... Oh, hello. There. This one here. Right. That's our power, George. That's what we're using. We're on maximum, but that's how we would fill up if we needed. To reserve power in times of need, use the highlighted auxiliary power slider to turn down the power draw. This concludes the engine room tutorial. Can't turn any of that off. Okay. Okay then, those that is the end of the tutorials for Iron Wolf then. Yes. So I'm gonna leave that there. This is just a quick run through of the tutorials. Just wanted to give you guys a, a bit of a heads up on how it is that how the mechanic mechanics work. So when you see me flummoxing around with Andy and Indy soon, it'll uh, you'll you might understand a little bit more what I'm trying to do, I guess, rather than just messing around filling with buttons that you don't really understand. So hopefully that'll give you a bit of an overview of what's going on. As you can see, this game is in early access, so maybe a few things, a few bugs that might crop up during our gameplay time, so don't worry too much if you see anything like that. Again, a massive, massive thank you to Andy. I mean, not really Andy did it because he wants to play the game, but that's fine, that's understandable. So a huge thank you to Andy for gifting me the game on Steam. It was really super, super generous. Thank you so much, Andy. Hope you enjoyed that quick look at the tutorial for Iron Wolf. If you did, please do click the like button. Always appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as, of course, keep an eye out for the upcoming Iron Wolf series from me and Andy and Indy. Um, 
I mean, I'm not going to put this video until I've actually done some recording with them. So as soon as you see this video, you know, within the next few days, there will be an actual gameplay video of us playing. So look out for that. Don't forget we stream every week as well at 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. So come along and say hello there. Playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey at the moment. A little different to Iron Wolf, but it'd be wonderful to see you there nonetheless. Otherwise, I will see you next time when we start our multiplayer Iron Wolf campaign. And as always, thank you very much for joining me.